So in 2017, over 25 million people boarded cruise ships all over the world. Now, if you're keeping count, that's more than the total population of Greece. It's become America's favorite choice when it comes to going on vacation. It's easy to see why hopping aboard a cruise ship becomes more popular each year. Heading out on a cruise is also coming back in style with newer generations. Two-thirds of Gen Y and Millennials say that cruising is their new preferred type of vacation. How's that? Well, let's see. It's easy to plan in advance. On board, you can find activities for all family members, and you get a chance to visit several different destinations in one trip. An added bonus of booking a cruise? You can sample various places for a future time off. The entertainment on board is often top-notch, providing passengers with an added taste of luxury. And the amenities and accommodations are generally very reliable. Not to mention that it gives tourists that feeling of actually getting away from everything that people strive for while out of the office. Royal Caribbean International is one of the largest cruise lines in the world, with just over 19% of the cruise market as of 2018. Its current fleet is divided into many different classes of ships, including the Voyager class, Radiance, and Quantum. Ooh. The latest addition to the Royal Caribbean International's impressive fleet was built in 2018. Wonder of the Seas is now the largest cruise ship in the world. Since this spectacular liner has just had her maiden voyage in March 2022, let's look at some of the incredible perks it has to offer its passengers. For starters, the boat is so big that it had to be split into neighborhoods. Well, it figures since Wonder of the Seas can accommodate almost 7,000 passengers. Fond of New York? Well, no worries. Wonder of the Seas has a central park of its own, with an estimated 10,000 plants to check out. The ship's central park is a feature of all Oasis-class ships, being one of the so-called neighborhoods. Let's look at some other areas, shall we? Like this boardwalk, a place that includes an arcade, a candy store, and a sports bar. It's best suited for long walks. There's a pool and sports zone on Wonder of the Sea. These areas feature the ship's numerous pools and hot tubs. There are many activities to check out on the sports court. Then there's the Royal Promenade, or Promenade if you prefer. That's the main road on Wonder of the Seas, with bars, lounges, and places to grab a cup of coffee, or a luxurious latte. The entertainment neighborhood is the focal point for leisure activities on the ship. Here, guests can find a comedy club, an ice skating rink, and even a theater. The spa and fitness area is a tranquil zone with a huge array of treatments available. The fitness center is free of charge, by the way, so there's no excuse for guests to skip a leg day. An extra eighth zone was added to Wonder of the Seas. It's called the Suite Neighborhood. This is an exclusive area designed for guests staying in the suites. Oh, now I get it. It's located at the top of the ship. Guests here have designated staff members called Royal Genies. Yeah, if you rub a lamp in your suite, they appear. Nah, not really. The genies are similar to butlers. They can cater to just a few cabins. Of course, the cruise line wants to divert other guests from asking these crew members various questions and taking their time. That's why the genies don't wear name tags in public areas. As for its itinerary, Wonder of the Seas was initially supposed to be homeported in China. But Royal Caribbean decided to move the liner to the United States. In March 2022, the ship started its journey with seven-night Eastern and Western Caribbean itineraries. In May 2022, Wonder of the Seas is scheduled for a trip to Europe, with Western Mediterranean cruises from Barcelona and Rome planned for its guests. Passengers will also be able to visit Palma de Mallorca, Spain, and Capri, Italy. When the summer season is over, Wonder of the Seas is scheduled to return to Florida to offer year-round sailings starting November 2022. And by the way, there is no truth to the rumor that a special cruise only for highly allergic and hay fever sufferers will be called the Wonder of the Sneeze. Nope, not at all. 
Now, it's hard to imagine a ship so massive that can accommodate so many amenities on board. For example, the Titanic was the largest ship of its time, measuring 882 feet in length. And Wonder of the Seas is not only 1188 feet long, it's also 36% taller and 34% wider. Speaking of lifeboats, which I am about to, Titanic had a mere 20 lifeboats on board, which was tragically not enough to fit all the passengers after the ship hit the iceberg. But Wonder of the Seas has an even smaller number of lifeboats, 18 to be precise. Sounds weird and dangerous? Well, not really, given that each of these lifeboats can accommodate up to 370 people. It means that all the passengers and crew members, an estimated 8,000 people if fully booked, are going to be safe in case of an emergency. If we could somehow have a race between the two ships, well, Titanic was in fact the faster ship out of the two, beating Wonder of the Seas by one knot per hour. Cruise ship passengers today are more interested in the experience rather than the speed of the boat itself. That's why how fast a ship can travel is not an extremely important aspect nowadays. In terms of costs, Titanic cost around $7.5 million at the time of its construction. It's the equivalent of about $200 million today. How about Wonder of the Seas? Well, it cost a staggering $1.35 billion to build making it six times more expensive than the Titanic. How about we compare ticket prices? Well, in this case, the least expensive ticket on Titanic was 7 pounds. It's about $1,000 today. The cheapest ticket on Wonder of the Seas is currently 423 bucks. But prices may vary depending on the location, season, itinerary, and how much you tip your royal genie. And I know you were going to ask, how about icebergs? Well, Titanic steamed in the frigid North Atlantic, where you had to be on the lookout for those. Wonder of the Seas will be cruising the balmy Caribbean, where the worst thing you can hit on is 17 in blackjack. Oops, busted. Anyway, set side by side with its other sisters from the Royal Caribbean fleet, Wonder of the Seas is equally as impressive. The company's earliest ships could host about 2,500 people. This included passengers and the staff. Such ships were Splendor of the Seas, Legend of the Seas, and the smallest of them all, Thumbelina of the Seas. No, wait, that should be Empress of the Seas. Oops, my bad. The largest ships in the company's fleet can now house about 9,000 people altogether. It's almost three times the size and capacity of the earlier liners. Wonder of the Seas is one of them, as well as Harmony of the Seas and Symphony of the Seas. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yep, if you ever encounter a ship with of the seas in its name, it's safe to assume it belongs to Royal Caribbean. But if it's a can of tuna, it might actually be chicken of the sea. Hey, I like tuna! Now, choosing between cruise ships based on their size is like wondering if you should visit your local museum or the Louvre in Paris. It all depends on your preferences. Some families prefer small settings. Others are a fan of large spaces that can provide everything they need. Historically, it's equally as exciting how far we've come in terms of maritime transportation. The SS Royal William, for example, was the first boat to ever make a transatlantic voyage almost entirely steam-powered in 1833. And it was a mere 160 feet long and could house roughly 155 passengers. And if the seas were calm, then they were housed less roughly. <laughs> Similarly, the first modern megaship in the world was the MS Sovereign of the Seas. Launched in 1987, it was only 888 feet long and could carry a little under 3,000 passengers. Size and capacity are not the single improvements added to newer cruise ships out there. Recent technological developments in artificial intelligence and facial recognition have allowed cruise operators to ensure faster, smoother boarding for passengers. If, in the past, it took from 60 to 90 minutes for all passengers to board a ship, nowadays, cruise ship operators manage to get people comfortably settled in less than 15 minutes. Now I'm sure you're already eager to book a ticket. 
But let's look into some of the more interesting activities you can try on board Wonder of the Seas. This way, you'll know what you're getting yourself into. All Royal Caribbean ships have loads of artworks available for their guests to enjoy. But Wonder of the Seas goes above and beyond, even featuring statues of astronauts in key locations around the ship. You'll find the first astronaut looking through the glass at the promenade, while a second one is busy rock climbing at the boardwalk. The third and last astronaut is more of a movie fan. This statue can be found near the movie screen sitting area. Going astronaut sightseeing is proving to be quite the experience among guests. In the areas with no access to sunlight, Wonder of the Seas features virtual balconies. In case of bad weather, guests can still have a feeling of the outdoors, but without having to hide from wind or rain. Teenagers have a place of their own reserved on the ship. There's a special club with a private hot tub, selfie area, games, and comfortable seating. The inside part of this club features a vending machine, an interesting collection of literature, and tables for foosball. Well, sign me up! Staying in the water that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit for a long time definitely won't do your health any good. A water temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit is a nightmare. It feels much colder than the air of the same temperature. The passengers of the Titanic were in 28 degrees Fahrenheit water. Can you imagine how cold it was? Even the iceberg that the Titanic met was warmer. The water didn't freeze because of the high salt content. But what if the temperature had been higher? What if the Titanic had sunk in warm water, say 120 degrees Fahrenheit? Theoretically, this could have happened had the waters of the North Atlantic met a warm undercurrent from the southern part of the ocean on disaster day. But this heat wouldn't have been enough. The ocean area is too vast and the temperature is too low at night. The warm undercurrent alone wouldn't have made a difference for people who were overboard. But if the Titanic had sunk in another place at one particular moment, perhaps then all people could have been saved, thanks to an incredible natural phenomenon. Now, on board everybody! Our voyage to a parallel universe begins. It's a moonless night on April 14th through 15th. The Titanic crashes into an iceberg. Icy water floods the lower decks. The captain sends a distress signal. The nearest rescue ship, Carpathia, is 58 miles away from the sinking Titanic. At maximum speed, Carpathia will get there in four hours. That's quite long, even in warm tropical waters, since your body loses heat anyway. The Titanic begins to sink. The crew downs lifeboats. Some of the passengers jump overboard. The ship is going under the water. There are no boats left, so you jump along with other passengers. It feels as if you got inside a huge iceberg. The water is so cold that it's hard for you to move. You can't even scream because there's no air in your lungs. But at this moment, you feel a pleasant warmth coming from the depths. The heat rises above your knees and waist, then reaches your neck. Finally, you regain control of your muscles and can breathe deeply. You notice that all the other passengers feel the same warmth. The water becomes a little hot. It makes you happy. But in a moment, horror replaces your delight. The ocean begins to foam. And not because of the high temperature, but because something is rising from the ocean floor. You hear a heavy, low sound coming from the depths. It's not a sinking Titanic, but something bigger. You can see a huge iceberg nearby. It's melting, and a huge chunk is breaking off from it. A million bubbles appear on the surface. Then you feel something hit you in the leg. Thousands of strange, lightweight rocks are rising from below. There are also massive plates among them. People use them as lifeboats. You climb on one of those rocks and look at the ship. It doesn't sink, since all the water is bubbling and pushing the vessel up. You take one of the small rocks and understand everything. It's pumice! An underwater volcano has woken up right under the ship. Thousands of tons of volcanic rock are floating to the surface. When it erupts, its magma shakes the entire space, heats the water, and destroys the seabed. But it doesn't result in anything destructive on the surface. The enormous pressure of hundreds of millions of gallons of water suppresses the volcano's power. 
molten rocks of the Earth's crust are pressed against the seabed, and pumice rises to the surface. And here's why it happens. The upper part of Earth consists of many solid parts, tectonic plates. These plates collide with each other and divide. And when one part separates from another, the magma immediately comes up. So all volcanoes are these unstable fault sites. If the Titanic had sailed over one of these areas during an eruption, many passengers would have been saved. Back in the parallel universe, you notice the Titanic starts sinking again. The water is no longer bubbling. The volcano has gone out. In a matter of seconds, the ocean turns icy again. Fortunately, you have your pumice lifeboat. This is enough to wait for rescuers. But let's imagine a situation with no underwater volcano and an iceberg. A situation when the water was warm from the very beginning. One of the engines in the motor compartment of the ship breaks down. Several pipes burst because of increased pressure. And now there's a crack in the ship's body. Water is filling the lower decks. The ship is sinking. People evacuate on lifeboats. There's less panic since the night is warm and no one is freezing. Each passenger gets a life jacket. The ship is breaking. You understand that you have to jump. The Titanic goes underwater. Many passengers fall overboard in horror. They dive into the dark ocean and immediately come to the surface. Panic and complete chaos take over. The ship disappears in the dark, and finally, it's all silent. A few minutes pass, and you notice there's no panic at all. The water is warm. Almost all passengers have life jackets. Someone is floating on the wooden ship wreckage. After a couple of hours, the water no longer seems so comfortable. The ocean takes away your body heat. To keep warm, passengers swim closer to each other in a tight circle. Yeah, now it's quite possible to wait for another couple of hours till the rescuers come. People on lifeboats sail closer and take those who freeze on board. Passengers take turns, 20 minutes in the water, then 20 minutes in boats. It's essential not to take your clothes off. Even a wet outfit helps keep your body warm for longer. And when it seems that everyone is saved, somebody screams. A girl in a boat looks scared. She trembles with fear and points her finger into the black water. Passengers try to see what's there and notice a triangular fin. One, two, three, there are so many of them. The noise of the sinking ship has attracted a group of sharks. And now they are circling the survivors, hoping to satisfy their hunger. They're swimming slowly. It doesn't look like they're going to attack. But you should keep your eyes open, as these fish are some of the world's most aggressive and dangerous sharks, the bull sharks. They can be agile, fast, and unpredictable. They don't swim in the cold waters of the Atlantic, but the water in this parallel universe is perfect for them. The sharks are strong and sturdy. They create the illusion of slowness to relax their prey. They're called bull sharks because of their short, blunt muzzle, like that of a bull and they like to hit a target or other sharks with their forehead. Several fish are ramming boats. Someone falls into the water. Fortunately, people help them back on board. The sharks aren't going to retreat. Chaos and panic ensue. People are screaming and splashing the water with paddles to scare away the fish, but it doesn't help. One of the sharks opens its toothy mouth and clings to a boat. At this moment, you notice more fins nearby. A pack of great white sharks arrives at the party. They are some of the most dangerous animals on the planet. They're big, fast, and strong. And their 300 triangular teeth lined in several rows are sharp as blades. Great white sharks swim around the boats and scare away the bull sharks. You fall off the boat and see a big fin approaching you. Fear awakens the survival instinct in you. You're trying your best to swim away from the shark as far as possible. Of course, it's useless, since the shark is much faster and will definitely catch you. You feel your foot touching the shark's nose. The other foot gets into the toothy mouth. You scream in horror. After a second, the shark lets you go. Great white sharks rarely attack people. If they bite, it's just to test you. After all, the shark's favorite prey is seals. It simply loses interest if it realizes you aren't a seal. But if the shark is starving, it doesn't matter to it what kind of prey you are. Lucky for you, this one is not like that. Those survivors in the boats have almost nothing to fear either. 
great white sharks don't attack them. They can push boats slightly, but only to test them. The great white shark is swimming away from you, but a bull one appears, and it looks like it's hungry. The shark is swimming towards you, opens its mouth, and a loud ship horn penetrates the water. This is the RMS Carpathia that has come to the rescue. All the sharks swim away scared. All passengers are saved. Back in our universe, another ship that had been nearby could have saved the passengers much earlier. But that's another story. They were on their way to the new world when a rendezvous with an iceberg crushed all of their dreams and hopes. There was panic and tears and heartbreaking goodbyes, like that of Jack and Rose. Or was there? Let's see how well you know the real story of Titanic. The love story of Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bukater was inspired by true events. What do you say? Is it a myth or a fact? The most emotional Titanic love story was actually all made up by the screenwriter and director of the famous movie, James Cameron. Some passengers featured in the movie were real though. And by a mere coincidence, there was a Jay Dawson on board. His name was Joseph, not Jack, and he worked as a coal trimmer. The most expensive object lost with the Titanic was a painting by Pablo Picasso. What's your take on this one? It's a myth, another one given to us by the famous movie. The most valuable item that went down with the Titanic was probably a Mary Joseph Blondell painting, created in 1814. Some other valuable items were a violin that belonged to Wallace Hartley, the musician who insisted that they had to play till the very last moment. There was also a 1912 Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville that would now cost millions of dollars, a handwritten manuscript by Joseph Conrad, first edition essays by Francis Bacon, five Steinway grand pianos, and, of course, some fine china plates and cups, and first-class passengers' jewelry. The Titanic was the largest and the most luxurious passenger ship of its time. Does it sound real to you? Yep, it's totally true. In April 1912, the Titanic was the largest ship ever built. It was 882 feet long and had a maximum passenger capacity of 2,435 people. That's not a lot compared to the largest cruise ship of today, the Symphony of the Seas. It's just a bit longer than the Titanic, but has more than double the passenger numbers. And yes, no other cruise liner has probably beaten the Titanic in terms of luxury to this day. It costs more than $200 million to build in today's money. The tickets were also quite expensive. Duh! First-class tickets ranged in price from $1,700 in today's money for a berth up to $50,000 for one of the two parlor suites. Second-class tickets were $700. Third-class passengers had to pay between $170 to $460. Most of the passengers of the unsinkable ship managed to survive. True or false? Sadly, it's false. Only 37% of all the passengers actually survived the meeting with the Titanic. Around 61% of the first class passengers, 42% of the second class passengers, and 24% of the third class passengers made it out alive. The Titanic was passing through the Bermuda Triangle when things went wrong, and that's probably why it sunk. What do you say, myth or reality? It's 100% a myth. The Titanic never even came close to the Bermuda Triangle. The liner sank about 400 miles south of Newfoundland, which is a huge distance to the north of Bermuda, the infamous area where ships and planes disappear without a trace. We might have the moon to blame for the sinking of the Titanic. True or false? This one is true. 
The moon heavily affects the tides on Earth. The closer the moon is to the Earth, the stronger the tides are because of the increasing gravity of our satellite. Back in 1912, the moon was so close it made several glaciers in Greenland break apart. Massive chunks of ice that broke off from the glaciers started floating south. The supermoon event came just six minutes after a spring tide. The alignment of the moon, the sun, and the earth that makes their combined gravity reach its peak twice a month. And the day before, our planet had come the closest to the sun that year, which made the gravity even stronger. This mixture of events created perfect conditions for one of the most powerful tides in history. Icebergs breaking off from Greenland's glaciers drift off to the coastal waters of Labrador and Newfoundland, where they often run aground. To move on, they need to either melt and become lighter, or catch a high tide that would carry them further. The 1912's tide was as high as it gets. So, they shifted many shipping routes south because of the huge amount of icebergs. But not the Titanic, of course, as they believed it was unsinkable. It took 4 hours and 40 minutes for the Titanic to sink. What do you say? It's false, and if you're a Titanic expert, you definitely know it was actually 2 hours and 40 minutes. And this was slow enough, given the damage caused by the iceberg. It didn't sink faster, thanks to the ship's construction. There were 16 watertight compartments in the lower part of the ship. They worked as a lifeline. When the iceberg crashed into the hull, it broke into 6 boxes. The Titanic could have stayed afloat only if 4 compartments had been damaged. Water filled the first six compartments within one hour. During this time, the ship tilted slightly to the right side. Then, water began to flood the seventh box when all six boxes were filled. And from that moment, the sinking rate was growing with every second. The ship's bow sank under the water, and then the stern filled up. One of the leading reasons for the Titanic tragedy was signal rockets. True or false? What's your take on it? This one is true! When any ship sinks, the crew members must release red flares. It's a signal to all nearby ships that someone is in trouble. But for an unknown reason, someone put white lights in the Titanic's rocket box. When the ship crashed into an iceberg, the crew members released white flares. Another ship, SS Californian, was nearby at the time. Its captain knew the Titanic was going through a dangerous iceberg area. The crew of this ship didn't see the Titanic in the dark, but they noticed white rockets. Radio communication between the vessels didn't work. The SS Californian operator turned off the receiver. The Californian captain felt that something was wrong, so he sent a Morse lamp signal to the Titanic. But it was too late. The ship was already underwater, so no one could respond. Another ship, Samson, was sailing alongside the Titanic. It drifted with lights off since it was catching seals and that's not legal. When the captain saw the Titanic's white rockets, he thought it was the Coast Guard. So Samson sailed away as fast as they could. They realized they had abandoned the drowning passengers once they made it to Iceland and learned the horrible news. In 1996, one expedition managed to raise the Titanic from the ocean floor. Do you believe it? If you don't, you're right. There were different ideas on how to raise the Titanic, from doing it with compressed air to putting it in wire mesh and covering it with liquid nitrogen, or using giant magnets. The only real attempt to raise the Titanic was made in 1996, and it failed dramatically. The expedition's goal was to lift a part of its hull, weighing about 21 tons. It would still have been the largest piece to see the sunlight again, if the operation had succeeded, that is. They lowered four large bags filled with diesel fuel to the bottom of the ocean and attached them to the hull plate. Then, the fuel bags were released and they started lifting the pieces on their own. The plate was about 200 feet below the surface when the weather got rough. The expedition members decided to tow the part to calmer waters around 80 miles away. Long before they reached the towing destination, half of the plate broke off and sank to the bottom again. 
two of the lifting bags seemed to have broken loose, and the hull went down. The Titanic will most likely crumble to dust halfway up if someone tries lifting it again. So, how many correct answers do you have? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.